வணக்கம் இந்த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோ வி ஹவ் சீன் தி சீக்வென்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஈவெண்ட்ஸ் தட் அக்கர்ஸ் வென் தி அப்பர் லிம் டெவலப்ஸ் இன் தி எம்ப்ரியோ பட் ஹவு டு த டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் சிஸ்டம்ஸ் டெவலப் ஃபார் இன்ஸ்டன்ஸ் ஹவு டஸ் த வாஸ்குலர் சிஸ்டம் டெவலப் ஹவு டஸ் த ஸ்கெலிட்டல் சிஸ்டம் டெவலப் அண்ட் ஹவு டு த ஜாயிண்ட்ஸ் டெவலப் ஆல் திஸ் வி ஷால் சி இன் திஸ் வீடியோ we have seen the sequence of events and the signaling centers for growth and factors playing a role in the embryology of the upper limb what remains to be seen is the embryogenesis of different parts of the upper limb which we are going to deal with in this video when we are going to talk about embryogenesis of the upper limb we mean the development of the different structures in the upper limb like the vasculature the skeleton the joints the muscles the nerves and the hand as a whole the vasculature of the upper limb in the embryo develops by the transformation of mesoderm into angioblasts we have already seen in the previous video about how the different types of mesoderm migrate into the developing limb bud this process of transformation is controlled by the basic helix loop the helix transcription factor tal1 the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor also plays an important role in the development of the vasculature this process of development of vasculature of the upper limb actually begins at carnegie stage 13 there is a dense meshwork of primitive vascular channels that form de novo from the angioblasts in the limb mesoderm these vascular channels coalesce proximally to form a central artery which is known as a subclavian artery that connects to the dorsal aorta via the seventh intersegmental artery two peripheral veins also form that drain into the posterior cardinal system the network of vessels gets channelized to form the axillary artery by the time the embryo reaches carnegie stage 17 and by stage 19 the brachial artery dividing into the median artery radial artery ulnar artery and the interosseous arteries has formed the primitive vascular plexuses that started off this entire process persist distally on the radial aspect even at stage 19 so the radial artery merges with an extensive primitive capillary plexus on the radial side while the ulnar artery forms the palmar arch This explains why it is the ulnar artery that forms the palmar arch. With continued growth, the median and interosseous arteries decrease in size. The median artery degenerates providing blood supply to the median nerve only in the completely grown fetus. Then the palmar arches and digital arteries develop. By Carnegie stage 21 the major vessel architecture of the developing upper limb in the embryo is complete the majority of vascular anomalies arise between stage 17 and 21 that is between days 41 and 52 the development of the skeleton of the upper limb runs alongside the development of the vasculature the skeletal development occurs due to the influence of SOX9 which is a high mobility group transcription factor parts of the mesoderm that have migrated into the limb bud are transformed into chondrogenic precursors and induce condensation so chondrogenesis occurs and endochondral ossification forms the skeletal framework of the growing limb this is the hyaline cartilage model chondrocytes proliferate hypertrophy and then die leaving an extracellular cartilage matrix ossification occurs within this diaphysis of enlargen or the cartilage matrix this is the primary ossification center which occurs during early fetal development vascular invasion of the proximal epiphysis and then the distal epiphysis lead to the secondary ossification centers later so each bone in the upper limb has two ossification centers a primary center within the diaphysis 
and a single secondary center that develops postnatally. This cartilage model or the enlargement develops distally to form the humeral enlarge by stage 15, the forearm bones enlarge by stage 17 and also the hand bones enlarge by stage 19. By stage 21, the primary ossification is in place. The development of the upper limb in the embryo follows the basic system of stylopod, zygopod and autopod. The stylopod which is the most proximal contains one element and here it is the humerus in the upper limb and femur in the lower limb. The zygopod consists of two parallel elements along the anteroposterior axis and these are represented by the radius and ulna in the upper limb and tibia and fibula in the lower limb. The autopod contains three to five elements representing the fingers of the hand and the toes of the foot. By Carnegie stage 17, there is a partial rotation of the humerus. We have seen that it is the SOX9 that controls this skeletal development. So bony malformations are likely to involve disruption of this SOX9 and the progressive proximal to distal enlarge formation. So radiohumeral synostosis, if it occurs, would most probably occur earlier in development than polydactyly or syndactyly. The development of joints of the upper limb is also interesting. The first morphologic evidence of joint formation is the compact cellular condensation called the interzone. The central region of the interzone begins to expand, accumulates hyaluronan and becomes hypocellular in a process termed as cavitation. The two cellular regions of the interzone begin to differentiate into the opposing articular cartilage surfaces. The mesoderm surrounding the developing joint condenses to form the joint capsule. The blue dots that you see are the chondrogenic precursors and the orange dots that you see are the chondrocytes. Muscles develop in the upper limb in three phases. The embryonic myogenesis where the primary myotubes and basic muscle layout are established, the second wave of myogenesis occurs when the secondary myofibers surrounding the primary myofibers contribute to the bulk of the muscle mass at birth. And after birth, we have the postnatal growth and muscle regeneration. The myocyte precursors of the limb arise from the dorsolateral aspect of the associated somites in the corresponding dermomyotome subdivision and express what is known as the PAX3 transcription factor. By Carnegie stage 13, during early limb bud formation, the limb mesoderm condenses to form the proximal tendon primordium, the PTP, which forms a scaffold for migration of myocytes. Limb-specific myocytes migrate into the proximal limb bud initially as dorsal and ventral masses directed by the proximal tendon primordium or the PTP. By Carnegie stage 15, the ventral mass migrates into the biceps and brachialis under the direction of the PTP and forms what is known as the intermediate tendon primordium, the ITP. The myocytes coalesce to form fibers and begin to produce myosin filaments. Cells known as the satellite cells take up residence under the basal lamina of the developing myofibers. With the development of the muscle mass, the resting flexed position of the upper limb is seen in stage 21 and this rotates the upper arm. The elbows shift from dorsal to caudal and the forearm rotates medially at the elbow. In the forearm, the superficial muscles differentiate before the deep muscles. As far as the hand is concerned, the intrinsic muscles arise from five embryonic muscle layers which differentiate and fuse. These five muscle layers are the introsiae dorsalis accessoriae, the intermetacarpals, the flexors brevis profundiae, the contrahentis and the lumbricals which later form the different intrinsic muscles of the hand. 
development of the nerves of the upper limb in the embryo is by outgrowth of nerves into the limb bud. This lags behind muscle migration and involves both motor and sensory neurons. The nerve roots containing motor and sensory processes from C4 to T1 coalesce to form a meshwork or plexus which eventually leads to the formation of three major trunks in the upper limb, the upper, middle and lower by Carnegie stage 15. Distal growth of these nerves leads to the formation of cords by stage 17 and formation of branches by stage 21. We have seen how the brachial plexus develops and how the nerves grow into the upper limb. But the landmarks of neural development in the embryo are the formation and differentiation of neurons known as neurogenesis, the migration of these immature neurons, the outgrowth of axons from the neurons, the guidance provided by the motile growth cone which looks like this under electron microscope and the generation and formation of synapses. The development of the hand begins with the hand plate where the digit specification occurs by the influence of the sonic hedgehog protein and the HOX gene gradient which decide on how the fingers are going to form. The onlogen formation that is the underlying skeletal framework is controlled by the bone morphogenetic protein gradient. Then we have already seen the process of apoptosis and lysosomal mediated cell death which cause the separation of fingers from distal to proximal. If we look at the timeline of the development of the hand plate, by about 27 days after fertilization, the arm bud or the limb bud starts developing. By 34 to 36 days, elongation of the arm bud occurs. By 36 to 38 days, formation of the hand paddle occurs. By 38 to 40 days, early separation of digits begins. By 44 to 46 days, the digits are separated. By 9th to the 10th week, the fingernails formation begins. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please do click on the shown links to see more about congenital differences, especially the surgery of congenital syndactyly. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning, hand surgery, plastic surgery, trauma surgery and ethics. Vanakkam.